Hello, this is Frontiers of Parameterized Complexity, and our speaker of the day is Daniel Lokstanov. How are you, Daniel? Good, thank you. So, How are you so we go, right? And today, Daniel will speak about his recent advances on a KCAT problem. I'm leaving the stage, Daniel, to you. Thanks, Heather. Um, so I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, I guess if no, we write a no in the chat. Um, otherwise, I assume that you can hear me. Um, so I'm just going to go straight ahead. So what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, a parameterized approximation scheme for the min k cut problem. Uh, this is joint work with Socket and Vaishali. Uh, so without further ado, let's try to introduce the problem. So in the min k cut problem, um, input is a graph G, uh, an integer k, and positive weights on the edges. And the goal is to uh, split k, or split the vertex set into k non-empty parts, uh, so that you minimize the total weight of the edges that cross the partition. So um, if the graph is non uh, if the graph is unweighted and k is equal to two, uh, this is just minimum cut. So you want to split the graph into two parts, uh, minimizing the number of edges going across. Uh, if it's unweighted and there's a general k, then again you're splitting it up into k parts, minimizing the number of edges. And once you have weights, you're instead of minimizing the total number of edges, you're just minimizing their total weight. Let me break the suspense right away and tell you what we are going to prove, uh, or at least sketch a proof of in this talk. Uh, this is the following, that uh, we obtain a one plus epsilon approximation algorithm in time k over epsilon to the k times polynomial in n. What does this mean? It means that we have an algorithm that given g and k will output some partition of the vertex set into k parts. And if you look at the weight of this partition, so the total weight of the edges crossing it, it will be uh, no more than the weight of the best k partition times 1 plus epsilon. At the same time, the running time of our algorithm will be exponential in k, where it's something like k divided by epsilon to the k. Right? So if epsilon is 0 0.1 and we want the 1.1 approximation, this is a k to the k algorithm uh, times polynomial in n. No notice that the exponent of n is independent of k. Uh, this is why we call this a parameterized approximation scheme or a fixed parameter tractable approximation scheme. On the way to doing this, we get an algorithm with running time s to the k times poly n for unweighted graphs, uh, where s is the size of the cut. So if I ask you, is it possible to partition the graph into k pieces with at most s edges crossing the cut? Then we can determine whether the answer to this is yes or no in time s to the k. All right. So any questions to any questions to what the results are? No. All right. So. Uh, both of these results uh, are optimal uh, up to the exponential time hypothesis uh, and constants in the exponent, so that the form of the function is pretty much the best you can do. Um, what, of course, you can potentially be improving is the poly m factor uh, to make it linear. Right now, it is not linear at all. Um, and uh, the constant in the exponent. So. A little bit of prehistory of this uh, of this problem because it has uh, a lot of research that has been done on it, and uh, also 
there's been a lot of research in recent times that uh, have made a lot of progress on this pro problem. Uh, it's known to be NP-complete. Um, and since the early 90s, it's known that it has a polynomial time two approximation algorithm. Um, this is Saran and Bazirani. There's actually three different teams uh, that found this greedy two approximation algorithm for the problem. This is an algorithm where you just uh, iteratively find the minimum two cut, uh, which you can do in polynomial time, uh, and remove it. Then you break it up into two connected components. Again, in each one of them, find the minimum two cut, uh, cut the smallest one of the two, keep going. And uh, so, so this, has, th this was uh, discovered independently by at least three different teams. The pictures are of the first one to, to, to discover it, but in the paper we cite at least three teams. And, and it turns out that this algorithm is actually a 2 minus 1 over k approximation. So when k is small, this approximation ratio is slightly better than 2. But as k tends to infinity, uh, the approximation ratio approaches to. And it turns out that this is necessary. Uh, Manurangsi showed not that long ago that a 2 minus epsilon approximation algorithm that runs in polynomial time would actually violate uh, this set expansion hypothesis. All right. So um, if you count it better than 2 approximation, what else can you do? Well, in the 90s, uh, so <clears throat> Hochbaum and Goldschmidt uh, gave an algorithm that runs in polynomial time when k is small. So if, if you're only looking for a cut into three parts, uh, then you can do it in polynomial time. So it will be n to the big O of 9 in this case. Um, and you should contrast this to the multi-way cut problem where if I give you a graph and three vertices, and I ask you cut these three vertices from each other using the minimum number of edges, uh, this is not only NP-complete, but also APX hard. Um, so, so, so you, you can't, so for, for this really related problem, you can't expect algorithms like this. Um, however, for main k uh, where we are not prescribed, where the cut should be. Uh, we know how, like, or since the 90s, it was known that you can do polynomial time for fixed values of k. So um, this was improved by Karger and Stein to n to the 2k, approximately. Uh, this was all randomized. Uh, and then uh, Torup in, I think, around 2008, gave a very cool algorithm uh, with running time also n to the 2k, but this time deterministic. This is a frontiers of parametrized algorithms uh, kind of seminar. So of course, if you see uh, running time on the form n to the k square, n to the 2k, the natural follow-up question is, well, is this FPT? Can we get an algorithm with running time f of k poly n? Uh, and the answer here is no. Uh, so Down Downey, Esterville, Castro, Fa <coughs> Fellows, um, Elena Prito, and Fran Rosamond um, showed that you can't do better than n to the k up to constants in the exponent. So uh, there is no n to the little o of k algorithm, assuming the exponential time hypothesis. So uh, well, one thing that is a little bit confusing, at least when I first started thinking about this problem, is that k is not solution size, right? Like most people in the audience uh, do research in parameterized complexity, and then, then you're used to k being the solution size. k is not the solution size. Uh, k is the number of parts that we are trying to split the graph into. And, and, and therefore, an n to the k algorithm is like highly surprising, and an FPT algorithm would have been a miracle. So the highly surprising thing happens, the miracle does not. Um, so uh, before going on, let me give you a brief outline of the n to the 2k algorithm of Karger-Stein, because it's really cool, uh, and we're going to use some of the results. 
So what does this algorithm look like? I'm sure many of you know it because uh, this is often like the first or second algorithm taught in a, a class on randomized algorithms, uh, among other things, because it doesn't need any analysis of expectation or variance. Um, so here's the algorithm. Uh, you pick a random edge, contract it, and you keep going. And this is pretty much the entire algorithm. In fact, you keep going until there is k vertices left. And when there are k vertices left, that is your k cap. So like everyone who has been contracted to the same vertex, those go to the same part of the k cap. Now, um, you can prove with not too much hard work uh, that for every minimum k cut, so for every partition where the number of edges crossing it is the minimum, the probability that this random process will output that particular k cut uh, is at least 1 over n to the 2k. Yeah. And because, of course, uh, for each k cut, the probability, the, the event that that k cut is output, these are disjoint events. Now, it means that there are at the minimum cuts in any graph, uh, which, which is quite a non trivial statement because uh, the number of k cuts is k to the n, right? Like for every, um, for every uh, vertex, we have k options. So, so you get k to the power n, and if n is big and k is small, k to the n is much, much, much bigger than n to the k. Um, from the same analysis, and this is what we're going to use, uh, it also follows that the number of C approximate K cuts is at most N to the 2CK. So in particular, the number of K cuts uh, whose number of edges crossing the cut is at most twice times optimum isn't more than N to the 4. The number of, uh, the number of K cuts such that the number of edges crossing it is at most 10 times optimum uh, is at most uh, n to the 20, k, yeah. Okay, um, so let's move on. Uh, now, uh, 2008, equally elegant algorithm, uh, this time with a more complicated analysis uh, for, for getting a deterministic algorithm for, for k cut namely the Torops tree packing algorithm, uh, goes like this. Uh, take the graph. For now, let's do, let's pretend it's an unweighted graph. This also works for, for weighted, but, but let's just work with unweighted graphs for now. Uh, and in this unweighted graph, compute uh, about m log m minimum spanning trees. OK, so how do you compute the minimum spanning tree in an unweighted graph? Well, it's just a spanning tree. So, but why am I saying minimum? Well, uh, the first spanning tree is just a spanning tree. But the second spanning tree, you compute it as a minimum spanning tree where the weight of the edge is how many times it was used by the previous spanning trees. Yeah. So basically, you're just computing spanning trees in a greedy fashion where you're trying to use every edge as few times as possible. OK, so that's, that's, what, the, that's what the algorithm does. Uh, it computes them. And then there is a miracle that happens. The miracle that happens is that at least one of these trees will cross the cut no more than 2k times. In fact, 2k minus 2 times. This is where all of the hard work is to prove that that's what happens. I'm not even going to sketch it. But assume that this is true. Uh, it's very easy now to get uh, n to the 2k algorithm for k cut. In particular, compute all of these trees. Uh, guess which tree crosses the cut at most 2k minus 2 times. Um, then you guess the edges of the tree that cross the cut. OK, uh, how many edges are there? Uh, there's n edges or n minus 1 edges in a tree. I need to guess 2k minus 2 of them. So I'm making n to the 2k minus 2 guesses. Yeah. Now, after I remove the edges from the tree that are cut edges, 
the remaining edges are not cut edges, which means that each one of the connected components, of which I have about 2K, uh, have to be within the same part of the cut. Which means that I can now take these uh, 2K parts and I can guess, I can, I can go over all partitionings of them into K parts. Uh, so guess how to merge all of the ways of merging these uh, 2k minus k1 components into k groups, which takes time k to the order k, which gives me a total running time of k to the k and to the 2k. So that's, that's Torup's algorithm for you. Okay, so what's been happening? So, 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 this, is, so, so, so this is the prehistory of what's been happening up until 2010-ish uh, on this problem, with the exception of the result of Monorongsi, which actually was in 2018 or so on. Uh, but I think everyone really expected that uh, two is the best you can do, and so I have, I've, I've included this as part of the prehistory, even though it really isn't. Uh, but there's been a lot of activity on this problem within the past 10 years. Um, and the activity has come on the following four fronts. So the first one is, well, there is an n to the 2k algorithm, which is optimum up to ex up to constants in the exponent, but what should the constants in the exponent be? There is a big difference between an n to the 2k algorithm and n to the 0.01k algorithm. Uh, so which one is it? The next one is, well, there is this combinatorial bound on the number of minimum k cuts in a graph. Um, so uh, Karga and Stein's bound uh, implies that there is at most n to the power 2k of them. Uh, by looking at complete k partite graphs, uh, you, you get that there's at least about n to the k minus one of them. So, so c should be somewhere between one and two. Uh, the next one is what about parameterized approximation, which is what this paper is about. Um, so if you cannot have an algorithm uh, that computes optimum solutions in time f of k poly n, uh, what about approximation algorithms in running time f of k poly n? Right? Could we get an approximation, ratio, an approximation algorithm with a ratio of 10 in this running time? Well, yes, of course, there is a polynomial time algorithm. Right? There is a polynomial time algorithm with ratio of 2. So, um, if you're interested in parameterized approximation algorithms for this problem, you have to look at ratios that are strictly better than two, uh, because otherwise you already have a polynomial time algorithm, but it also has to be strictly more than one because factor one approximations that compute optimum solutions do require n to the k time. So for them, the k has to be in the exponent uh, by the results of uh, Downey et al. Okay, um, the, and, and finally, there's uh, normal parameterized algorithms the way we are used to them with the parameter being solution size. Right? Uh, if it is W hard uh, parameterized by K, what can we say when the, now the parameter is opt? Okay, and, and, and so, so what has happened? Um, the, uh, for, for exact algorithms uh, for num <coughs> and the number of minimum k cuts, uh, Gupta et al. in 2018 uh, showed that if you are working in unweighted graphs, or, or you can really think about this as polynomial integer weights, then you can beat uh, th then you can beat um, n to the 2k. In particular, you can get uh, n to the omega over 3k. I think it should have been 2 omega over 3 because you, you get the number between, uh, you, it, it's a number between uh, 1 and 2. It's not a number between 0 and 1. So, so I might have, that there, there might be a typo here. Okay. Uh, now this was subsequently improved, still in unweighted graphs, uh, to, to running time n to the k, so c is now equal to 1. Uh, then uh, the same group of authors uh, showed that the number of minimum k-cuts is not n to the 2k, it's actually n to the 1.98k uh, 1 
even in weighted graphs, um, and that they can be enumerated efficiently. So in particular, this automatically gives us an algorithm with running time one point n to the 1.98k, even for, for, for the general problem. And just, uh, just this year, 2020, uh, they showed that the original algorithm, the Carger's algorithm, actually runs uh, in time n to the k. And furthermore, that uh, that algorithm also shows um, that the number of uh, that the number of minimum k cuts is unto the k. Now these results are tight uh, in the sense that the number of minimum k cuts, uh, even in unweighted uh, complete k partite graphs, uh, is unto the k, and an improvement for uh, minimum k count below n to the k would improve would mean an improvement for weighted clique. So uh, clique, as we know now, k clique has an algorithm with running time slightly better than n to the k. It's something like n to the matrix multiplication over three. Uh, so n to the zero point seven nine or seven five or something like this k. Uh, but if the edges now have weights and you're interested in figuring out what is the maximum or minimum weight k clique, uh, then this is conjectured not to have an algorithm better than n to the k. And an improvement to the n to the k algorithm for min k cut would actually improve, would mean an improvement for k clique. Okay, what about parameterizations by S? Um, well, uh, Kovarabayashi and Torup uh, gave an algorithm with running time s to the s to the s poly n. This was the sh first one showing that this is FPT. Uh, they are, and, and, and they more or less started looking at uh, this problem from the perspective of unbreakability, even though they never say this explicitly, uh, which, which is going to be really crucial in all of the subsequent work from the parameterized perspective and, and for us as well. Now, um, Chitnis et al. Made, made this unbreakability notion more <clears throat> explicit and uh, improved the algorithm to s to the s squared. And Sigan et al., where Socket and I are part of the co-authors, uh, we, we further improved this algorithm to s to the order s. So, so, so now this is somewhat close to being optimal. Uh, it is still open whether we can get an algorithm that's single exponential, so, so the constants to the power s. And interestingly, I'm not aware of a lower bound for this problem on the form uh, 2 to the little o of s, but it would really be a miracle if this algorithm, uh, if this problem does have a 2 to the little o of s uh, kind of algorithm, uh, because, for example, it would, Im it would imply uh, sub-exponential time algorithms for densest subgraph uh, on 100 regular graphs, um, which sounds impossible. Okay, uh, what about parameterized approximation, which is, which is what this paper is about? Um, so uh, I was talking about can you beat two? And in uh, 2018, uh, this group of authors that uh, started the whole shebang of uh, really investigating this problem recently uh, showed that yes, you can beat two. They, they, they got an algorithm that is a 1.9997 approximation um, with running time two to the k to the sixth. Um, a year later, uh, or actually within the same year, it got improved to 1.81 and better running time two to the k squared. And they observed that, well, if you want uh, approximation schemes, so if you want a one plus epsilon approximation, uh, you can get it in time and like k over epsilon to the k and to the order k. So notice that their approximation scheme is not an FPT approximation scheme, right? So it's, it runs in time n to the k, and this was, and later they found an exact algorithm that runs in time n to the k. So the approximation scheme is now just a stepping stone in, in, in history um, be, be, because it's been superseded, okay? So, so the interesting thing, thing here is, is the improvement from 1.99 to 1.85. Uh, Still now in 2020, there was another improvement. Uh, so 1.81 got improved to 1.67. And of course, 
what this paper is about is that 1.67 can be pushed all the way down to 1.00000001 for your favorite number of zeros. So um, what has happened in these past 10 years? Well, there's been four research directions. Uh, the first two ones have more or less been completely resolved. The last one, parameterized algor uh, <coughs> algorithm with parameter S, has more or less been resolved. Um, the only thing is to figure out whether you can get single exponential or not. Uh, whereas the parameterized approximation, well, there is this relatively big gap between 1.67 and, uh, and, and 1. Uh, and let's, uh, in, in my opinion, it was more open than closed until us. And of course, what we do is that we completely close it. So, so we, we do bridge this gap all the way down to one uh, and show that this is optimal up to ETH. Uh, and, this is, and, and this more or less closes this research direction. OK, so um, now I can go to the technical part of the talk and, and, and sketch, uh, the ideas of, uh, sketch the ideas of the algorithm. So the algorithm consists of um, three ingredients. Uh, the first one is a sparsification procedure that is very similar to what's going on in graph sparsifiers. Uh, but, but now we don't care too much about making the number of edges small. We just want to make sure that the optimum, the size of the optimum solution um, is small in the graph that we're looking for. So uh, the first step is a reduction to unweighted graphs. This is the first thing. And uh, second, we two graphs where the size of the optimum is about order k log n. Yeah, that's uh, step number one. Step number two is a polynomial time tree decomposition uh, into poly s comma s unbreakable bags. Um, where what this is, this is the uh, polynomial time version of the main technical result of the Sigan et al paper, the, the S to the S algorithm. And then finally, we obtain a S to the order K time exact algorithm. So if I ask you, does there exist a partition into K parts uh, that only cuts S edges, we do get an algorithm with running time S to the K. OK, and now that I'm going to, to start doing, uh, doing some technical stuff, um, I'm going to stop my screen share. And I hope that you guys uh, can see the screen. Please write yes in the chat if, uh, if now the screen share is gone and uh, you can see the whiteboard. Great, thank you. OK, so um, now uh, what we're going to do is sparsification. And this is something that I'm going to go over really quickly because it is very similar to stuff that is well known. OK, uh, so the first step is like this. Um, do some, so, 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 so compute the factor two approximation so that you roughly know what opt is, okay? Now, from now on, I'm going to assume that the algorithm more or less knows what opt is, so it can set thresholds based on opt. Like, uh, if this is more than opt to this, if this is less than opt to this, well, you don't actually know what opt is, but you know what it is up to a factor two, and for our thresholds, this will, this will always be good enough. So um, you compute the two approximation. And now that you know roughly what opt is, you can do a knapsack style rounding. Uh, in particular, what you can do is that you can round the weight of every edge uh, to multiples uh, of epsilon times opt over n. Yes? Uh, because if you, if you round to multiples of epsilon opt over n, then the total additive error you incur is at most epsilon times opt. And this is within one plus epsilon factor, something like. 
And now that you've rounded it, so, so now that all of them are multiples by of epsilon oct over n, you can just divide it down, yeah? Which means that you now have integer weights between um, one and uh, one over this, right? So uh, should be something like <clears throat> at least polynomial in n. Okay. Um, so that's step number one, which basically means we can assume that the graph is unweighted. Okay. The next thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to look for small two cuts. Yeah. So if somewhere, if I can cut my graph, I mean, I'm trying to cut my graph into two pieces, uh, into k pieces, sorry. But if I can cut my graph into two pieces and do it really cheaply, then I should just do it. So if I can find, so if I can find a two cut of size at most epsilon times oct divided by k, yeah, then I should just remove all of these edges and keep going. Because I cannot be making a big mistake. I can only do this at most k times. Then I have spent at most epsilon oct edges total. And of course, I've cut my graph into k pieces and I'm done. So I know that this procedure is going to stop. Yeah. So, uh, OK, uh, because this, this connected components are independent of each other, I'm going to look at connected components. And so I will be left with the situation that, uh, well, this is the, the, the important observation. So this is that uh, opt two. So this is the number of edges in the smallest two cut uh, is strictly greater than opt k times epsilon over k. Yeah, because if it was smaller, then I would have cut. Okay. So questions to this? No, all right. So, so everything is perfectly clear so far. Um, okay. So do you mean do you mean one plus epsilon or epsilon? I mean epsilon here. Yes, I mean, I mean epsilon here. Uh, so because notice that the the smallest two cut, yes, will necessarily be smaller than the smallest k cut. Yes, because if I want to cut into k pieces, I need to cut more edges than if I'm trying to cut into two pieces. Yeah. Uh, but I'm saying that uh, if epsilon is 1 over 10, then uh, cutting in two pieces is no more than 10k times cheaper than cutting into k pieces. Yeah. Uh, really, the pr I mean, the precise, value, the, the precise value here doesn't matter much as long as it's a function of epsilon and k. That's the that's the key. Okay, so um, now that we know that opt two is large, what we're going to do is the following. Uh, we're going to set p uh, such that uh, p times opt two uh, is about k log n over epsilon. OK? Um, and now, uh, once p, p is a probability, yes, um, what are we going to do once we have a probability? We're just going to sample a random graph g prime, so sample g prime subgraph g uh, in the most natural way. You take every edge, you keep it with probability p, and you discard it with probability 1 minus p. Okay? Now, 
of course, what you're going to get is a sum graph of G. And then if you look at, if you look at uh, any fixed cut, right? if you look at any fixed partition um, of the vertex of the two parts, then uh, the expected number of edges crossing that cut will be the number of edges crossing the cut in G times P. Yeah? So for the smallest cut, the one that had size opt 2, um, now we know that the expected number of edges crossing that cut will be P times opt 2, uh, which is K times log n over epsilon. Yeah, times some constant. Yeah. So, okay, but what about all of the other k cuts in the graph? Right? Like, what what happens to all of the other ones? And then, just by combining Chernoff and the Carter Steinbaum, uh, it implies that with high probability. Uh, all cuts, so all two cuts, in G prime are one plus epsilon close to expectation. Yes, what does this mean? It means that if I look at any partition of G, into two parts, well, of the vertex set into two parts, and I ask myself, how many edges cross that cut in G prime? Well, it is within one plus minus epsilon factor of however many edges crosses that cut in G times P. Yeah. Which means that all of the two cuts got nicely preserved. Um, I'm not going to prove this. This is fairly standard. Uh, all you're going to do is for every k cut you're going to ask yourself, or for every two cut you're going to ask yourself, what is the probability that it deviated a lot? Um, that is going to be like one over some polynomial, where uh, the polynomial has bigger and bigger exponents the bigger the cut is. Uh, and then you can trade this against the union bound uh, by observing that the number of c approximate k cuts is at most n to the ck by car. And, and, and this is it. Okay? Uh, so uh, you get this result that with high probability, all two cuts in G prime are actually really close to their expectation. The kicker is well, for one plus epsilon approximate algorithms, we might just as well be working with G prime instead of G. Yes? However, in G prime, we know that. Um, the size of the cut is close to the expectation. So now in G prime, we know that this happens. Yeah. Okay. So we know that all of the uh, we, we know that all of the two cuts were closely preserved. But what about all the k cuts, right? Like we, we don't actually care about the two cuts, we care about the k cuts. But of course, if I look at the k cut, let's say k is equal to four, then the weight of the k cut is just the sum of uh, k two cuts divided by two, by, by hand shaking one. So I know that blue is not something that you can see very well, but I mean, here is a two cut, here is a two cut, here is a two cut, here is a two cut. Add all of them up, divide by, divide by two, you will get precisely the number of edges crossing this four cut. Yes? So if all two cuts are preserved up to a factor one plus minus epsilon, then that happens to all k cuts as well. Okay, so in particular, for the purposes of one plus epsilon approximation, we might as well be looking in G prime, where we know that the weight of the optimum two cut is about k log n over epsilon. And furthermore, because we got rid of all two cuts that were very small compared to their k cuts, yes, we know that 
uh, op2 was at least uh, op k times epsilon over k. Yes? We'll talk. Want to listen? Listen. Yeah? Um, and now uh, we know that opt2 is at most uh, k log n over epsilon. Yes? Uh, so now by multiplying it out, uh, we just conclude that opt uh, k is at most order of poly k log n one over epsilon as well. I think I might have made some calculation mistake somewhere. Uh, it's in my notes, but I don't feel like looking at them to figure out precisely what was the polynomial in k log n. I, I, I think it's k square log n one over epsilon cubed. Yes? Uh, but, but, but precisely what it is is not important at all. It's really that it's polynomial in k times uh, times a logarithm uh, times polygon over epsilon. Yeah. So in particular, uh, we now know that our solution is pretty small. And hey, we're doing parameterized algorithms, right? If the solution is really small, that's what all of this is about. Uh, run the algorithm with running time as to the s. Right? Well, uh, now if we know that s is small, yeah, and we do have algorithms that are parameterized in terms of s, let's just plug in, right? So if s is equal, if s is equal to, let's be really optimistic, uh, k log n over epsilon, uh, and we now just run our s to the s algorithm, uh, then we're going to get k log n over epsilon to the power k log n over epsilon. Yeah? Um, which is, of course, also known as roughly n to the power k log log n, which is not even polynomial for fixed k. But it's pretty close, right? It's like quasi-polynomial for fixed k, but we have polynomial time algorithms for fixed k that compute exact algorithms. So why on earth should we be doing this crazy stuff, right? So what this is say, telling us is that uh, parameterized algorithms, as they are, come close to giving us what they want. Uh, but they don't do it. Notice that even n to the k is not good enough, right? Even if instead of uh, an s to the s algorithm, we had a 2 to the s algorithm, right? then, then here we would have a factor 2, and here we would end up with an algorithm with running times something like n to the power k over epsilon, and n to the k over, like, n to the k over epsilon is not useful when you have an exact algorithm than running time n to the k. Yeah. So, um, okay, uh, we sparsified. We now have, um, <clears throat> we now uh, know that we can almost use the non parameterized algorithms uh, in, in order to, to get something smart, but we can't because it gives us too, too bad for running time. And of course, then what you, what, what you do is you take the s to the s algorithm, and, and instead of treating it as a black box, you open up the black box and see what you can get. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so, uh, let me skip ahead because there's only something like 15 minutes left. Yes? So let me skip ahead and tell you what we're going to get instead. Right? So, we're going, so, so we have this algorithm with running time s to the s, which isn't quite good enough. And then we think, well, 
Um, but we know that k in our instances is much smaller than s, right? Because s was something like k log n. Yeah? So s is at least a factor log n more than k. So can we exploit the fact that k is small compared to s uh, in improving this algorithm? And um, with some hard work, yeah, we get this algorithm with running time s to the power big O of k. Yeah? So with hard work, this is what we get. And now I claim that once we have this algorithm, we're done. There's nothing more to do. Why? Well, s is k log m over epsilon, yes? So what is our running time? It is k log m, so for one plus epsilon approximation, we run an algorithm in running time k log m over epsilon to the power k, yeah? And of course, it's big O of k, yeah? So what is this? This is k over epsilon to the order k times log n to the order k. And now is this part where, like, if you've done parameterized complexity enough, you should be like, ah, this is what happened. But if you haven't done parameterized complexity for a while, then this might still look like, oh, this is not even FPT. But you should sit down and convince yourself that log n to the power k is always, at most, I'm just keeping this first term, uh, n plus k to the order k. And this just comes from the fact that, well, n is an exponential function in log n um, every exponential grows faster than any polynomial, or any polynomial grows faster than any logarithm, unless k is really large compared to log n, it's large enough, and if k is large enough compared to log n, then k to the k is actually bigger than log n to the k. Yeah? Uh, so, this running time just turns into that running time, which is the running time of our approximation algorithm. So, so really, like from the perspective of approximation, at this point, we are done up to designing this algorithm. And if we can make an algorithm with running time as to the order k, we would be finished. OK, so now let's do that. In order to do that, of course, we are opening up again the black box of s to the s. So uh, the S to the S algorithm of Sigan et al. Um, looks like this. Uh, so it, it really has two steps. And one, the, the step number one is compute tree decompositions uh, with adhesions of size at most s, such that every bag is um, s comma s plus one unbreakable. And two uh, is do dp on this tree decomposition. Okay, and, and this is really it. So, um, so what the S to the S algorithm does of, of Sigan et al is that it computes a tree decomposition of the graph with small adhesions. And let me remind you, if we have a tree decomposition, Um, then, uh, what is this? So, a tree decomposition, we will go up here. So, the tree decomposition is a pair t and a function chi 
from the vertex set of T uh, to uh, the to vertex sets of the graph, right? Every vertex of the tree is assigned a vertex, um, as a set of vertices in the graph. Uh, and so if I look at the vertex chi of t, uh, the vertex t in t, then chi of t, this is what are called the bags. Uh, and if I look at a t, t prime, in the edges, not of G, I'm sorry, of the tree, if I look at an edge of the tree and the tree decomposition, then the intersection of those two bags, this is what is called the adhesion. Yeah? And um, the reason, of course, it's called the adhesion is that if you work with tree decompositions a bit, what happens is that the parts of the graph, the, the different parts of the graph, are precisely glued together along small separators that are precisely the adhesions of the tree decomposition. Yeah. So now uh, I'm going to speed up ridiculously because there's eight minutes left. Um, you can think about um, what do uh, dynamic programming algorithms on tree decompositions use well. If you've used if you're if you're used to bounded tree width, you think well both the time and the space that you use is two to the power bag size. Well, if you think about it a little bit more, that doesn't necessarily have to be true. Uh, you can get away with the size of your table being 2 to the power adhesion size. Yeah, if for, for any of your favorite problems, min k count, independence, uh, whatever. Yes, because this is where you have the interface between what you have considered so far and what comes in the future. However, so, so you, you also need to compute the DP table for the adhesion Assume, assuming that it has already been computed for the children, and here the two to the power, the size of your bag, is going to come into your running time. So, so like in normal bounded tree width algorithms, you can very easily extend them so that the space becomes two to the power adhesion, but the running time is still two to the power bag size. Yeah, and in general, what happens is that if you have tree decompositions where the bags aren't necessarily small, you can still do dynamic programming where the space requirement is two to the power adhesion size, as long as each bag isn't necessarily small, but structured in some way that makes it possible for you to efficiently compute the DP table for the root or for, for this adhesion, given that the DP tables for the children have already been computed. And uh, this is precisely what's going on in this S to the S algorithm. Yeah. So first, there's, uh, there, there is a, comp a computation of a tree decomposition with adhesions of size at most S, so that everybody has some property that I'm not going to go into uh, that lets you do this dynamic programming uh, bottom up in an efficient manner, so that you can compute um, the DP table of this adhesion, assuming that you know the DP tables for the children. Okay, uh, now here is here is one problem. The first problem is this tree decomposition already takes us to the eighth time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we look at we look at uh, the the proof of Sikhan et al. and observe that. With a little bit of hard work, if you're willing to relax your uh, relax your parameters a little bit, so instead of s comma s plus one, you get s comma s to the power five, whatever that means. But adhesions are still size s. Uh, but now you can get away with doing this in polynomial time instead. Yeah. So we we, we open up this black box. We look into the three decomposition, and we're saying, well. Uh, you can still, in polynomial time, you can compute a tree decomposition with adhesions of size at most s, 
uh, where every bag is s comma s to the five unbreakable. Okay, uh, so suppose we have something like this, and now you want to do, do to do dynamic programming over this tree decomposition. You still run into trouble because uh, both the time and the space, even of the s to the s algorithm that has the stronger tree decomposition was s to the s. And let me tell you where. Let me, let, let, let me tell you like, what is the main issue there. And this is the following. So suppose we look at some adhesion. Yeah, so, so we're looking into some bag in the tree decomposition. Here is his parent. Here is where they overlap. This has size. S, right? This is our separator, he has size s. Now, if you try to do dynamic programming for min k cut over tree decompositions, what you realize is that what you have to do is you have to go over all ways to partition this adhesion into k parts, into k pieces. Yeah? Which means that here you the, the number, the number of partitions you have to try is k to the power s, yeah? And k to the power s, just as before, is much bigger than s to the k, because we want to, we want to find an s to the k algorithm, yes? And now the number of states that we need is k to the s, and notice that even 2 to the s is much bigger than s to the k. Yeah? So even the number of states in the dp that we're trying to do is way too big. And here is the crucial insight, right? It's going to come in the last two minutes, and I'm going to give it very handwavely. The crucial insight is the following. We can make the dynamic programming algorithm only populate as to the k cells of this seemingly gigantic dynamic programming table. How do you make it populate only a few cells? Well, every cell corresponds to a partition of the adhesion into k parts. We sieve out the k partitions that we know aren't going to be useful anyway. And how do we sieve them out? Well, we go back to Torup trees. Torup trees tells us that we can guess a tree in the, in the whole graph that will cross this adhesion no more than k times. Or no more, no, it will cross the adhesion no more than s times, but it will cross the cut no more than k times or 2k times. So I can guess where the tree crosses the cut and then take the unions, take the unions of the components to make all feasible partitions of this adhesion. Of course, here there's a problem because this store of tree has n edges in it. Yeah? Um, but n, even though it has n edges, you only care about where that edge lies on a path between two vertices of the adhesion. And because the adhesion only has size s, you can trim down this tree down to a tree of size order s. And instead of guessing n to the k, guess s to the k, making sure that the number of feasible partitions for these adhesions is no more than s to the k. And I think that is where I will stop. I will stick around for another 10 or 15 minutes for people who have questions, uh, but I think this is, this is a good place to stop. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Daniel. So questions, please. So Daniel, quick. Uh, so randomization is used only in the specification step, I guess. Yes. But that I, I guess it's not needed technically, or. So uh, in the specification, so, so we we looked into spectral sparsifiers. Yeah. Um, 
we couldn't immediately get it to work. Uh, but it could be more because uh, we don't know how to plug the right things together uh, than, than that it isn't there. I, I, I believe it is there. Like, I believe this part can be the hardest. So, so in some sense, you need an unweighted graph eventually, I guess. Is that the reason or just that you can start with, you can get a weighted no, graph? So, so the thing is, so, 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 you, so, so for purposes of one plus epsilon approximation, going yeah. to unweighted is easy. There is no randomization yeah. needed. You just round, right? Like the not, like, like uh, the PTAS for knapsack is yeah, fully so that, that, that's right? You just round the weight to the nearest something. And, and, and we do exactly the same. So the randomization so, I mean, why don't is where you take every edge and you keep it with some probability. And there are yeah. deterministic versions of this, but they all produce weighted graphs again, whereas the difference in weights can be exponential and, and we don't quite know how to get rid of this. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Daniel, there are questions of Emin in the chat about lower bounds. How to prove the lower bounds under the EDH? Yeah, th this is sort of silly. I, it, it's just that like L to the little o of K is the best you can do, right? So, so if you set epsilon, I mean, if you set epsilon to be like one over N square, um, then uh, like K to the K over, you, you just plug it in, right? Like you set epsilon to be very, very tiny. And, and now if you get the better approximation scheme, it would actually improve too fast exact output. So, so, I mean, it, so, so, so um, it is, I guess, conceivable, right, that in, that you can prove something better in the domain where, the, where epsilon is large, right? Like, if you fix yourself to the domain where epsilon is large, it could be that you surprisingly can get something better. Uh, but but uh, I don't know how to, how to uh, formalize this. I know. Doesn't look like there are any other questions. So okay. So so what I mean, um, I think the the parameterized complexity question. So, so okay. So 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 there are some. There's mostly kernels questions that are left here. Yes. I mean now that you have a one plus epsilon approximation in FPT time, the question is well, can you pre-process this to some function of k and then the one plus epsilon? I mean, especially given this, the, the, that the initial step is a specification step. Uh, it's natural to ask, well, how much can you do in just polynomial time uh, in, in terms of pre-processing? So that's, that's one thing. Another thing is, of course, the parameterized question, like can you get f to the s down to 2 to the s? Um, and of course, pushing constants is, is important here as well. But it's, um, on a big scale, it's more or less skills, everything. Right? Yes, yes. So, 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 so like qualitatively, I think, uh, uh, qualitatively, the only open one is s to the s to 2 to the s in normal parameter. Okay, since there are no any other questions, uh, Daniel, it was great to see you and uh, uh, we really appreciate you wake up so early in the morning and stand in front of us. So, so have a nice day, uh, day and thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks. Yes, you're always welcome. Bye. Bye. Bye.